we will call a meeting to order. This is the February 27th uh, regular meeting of the Dairy and Parks and Recreation Commission. We are going to start off by approving the minutes of the January 16th meeting, and then we'll be moving to a presentation by Weston and Sampson. So, Dan, this shouldn't take us more than just a few minutes. Okay, did anybody have any changes or comments on the minutes? Um, I had a handful of very minor things. Can I just give them to Jamie? Sure. I mean, things just like um, tenths or a extra word or... Okay. I think the date of your sweet something was incorrect. <laughs> Um, yeah, that February 14th. Isn't that Valentine's Day? <laughs> That's probably why the name was in my head. But yes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they're, they're very, very minor changes. So I will just hand this over to okay. James. That's subject perfect. to minor. If I get a motion to approve them, subject to uh, minor grammatical and uh, factual changes. Susan? Mary Louise? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Okay. Everybody? There's nobody needed to abstain, correct? Good. Wonderful. All right, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Dan Biggs from Weston and Samson. We have been working <coughs> with Dan for quite some time on the original Weed Beach plan, and then he worked very closely with the town and the commission regarding the Master Parks plan. And most recently, we've been working together to develop concepts to uh, make the section of Weed Beach that um, includes what was known as the short lane parcel and also the surrounding land around it, which the town actually previously owned, to make it more accessible and usable to the public. So Dan is going to run through the concept that's being proposed. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, just a quick overview that about the project. Everyone's familiar with Weed Beach Park, which is the a greater dark line that surrounds, and sorry I forgot my pointer, so I'm going to point by finger and walk back and forth. Um, the greater general project area of the Wee Beach Park is as here with the dark blue line. Uh, but the project set that we're looking at tonight is the short lane parcel that was acquired maybe five, six, seven years ago. I lose track at this point, but it's mostly right in here. Uh, the exact parcels were a uh, couple of former residential properties on Short Lane that uh, were uh, removed the last couple of years, and this town has since purchased those. There was a number of parcels that have been in the town's ownership for a number of years that was a result of the wastewater pump station. At one time, it was a wastewater treatment facility. So those parcels have been town owned for a number of years and under the oversight of the sewer commission. So our project really is looking at, within the red line, of making this part of the uh, greater Wee Beach Park area. Um, so our goal was to seek to create this as a usable space uh, for access to the beach, but also integrating it into the Wee Beach Park itself um, as a park amenity. Um, just for reference, uh, some locations, it's the pavilion uh, and the paddle hut, just for reference, and you'll see those in each of the graphics coming up. So specifically to the site itself that we're looking at, uh, as you enter Wee Beach Park, you enter through the gatehouse. Uh, on the left-hand side, you pass the fencing area, which is actually a pump station. Um, and then currently, there is a, a gravel or a sand parking area. Um, at one point, when the Wee Beach Park was uh, being re renovated, this was planned to be paved, and that was deferred for a future project. So this project would look to pave that to expand the parking opportunities within the greater park area. And really just to enhance uh, what is now lands uh, that recently was cleared, uh, recently cleaned up a little bit just to get people to have access to the park space itself, but also just to uh, learn as to what's available within the space. You see here the uh, former driveway that went to a residence uh, drive. It's used for the uh, sailing club, uh, used sailing, uh, where they store boats uh, through the seasons and also they have access down to the sound for their um, practices in the summer. I mentioned the parking area. Uh, on the site there's also a pocket wetland here that was once a wastewater lagoon. 
Um, it's not really in great shape in terms of the content and the qualities of the species of plants in that wetland area, a lot of invasives. Um, there is a form of short lane drive off of Nearwater Lane that comes in, and formerly this is where well, the residence was, so there's a drive aisle down here into the residence. Uh, the uh, access near water has since been gated off with a, a wooden uh, fence. Uh, but you can see basically in this area is a more residential style grass with some shrubs, or at least it was at one point. And there's a tree line along near water that provides a, a nice buffer to the adjacent residences on near water lane. So our proposal is to uh, look at the project or the project site um, to enhance it, to make it usable by removing the unusable features of portions of the site. So I mentioned invasive species, uh, some of the remains of the residential areas that were not uh, demolished at the time the residences were brought down. Um, you can see in the upper right hand photo there are utility lines across the parcel. So the idea would be to uh, relocate those either underground or around the parcel perimeter. Um, removing fencing debris, and some of this has been completed so far by park staff and um, this past summer. Eradicating invasive species within the parcel and mitigating any wetlands that are being removed through the EPC's approval process. And really creating a holistic pathway system through the uh, park itself, and I'll show you a graphic here in a minute. And those, this whole process, we want to make sure that we allow for future accommodations for a boathouse, for the uh, youth sailing as well as the possible other amenities desired in this park area in the future. And we envision this to be a multi-phase process pending funding obviously as to what's available to what can be improved in the near future and long term. So the concept that we're working on right now is looking at, you can see on the left hand side, is enhancing the parking area going from a sand gravel surface to a paved so it would be integrated into the overall parking area at Wee Beach Park, while also connecting the overall park system with a pathway network that would basically give a loop around the entire park area. Um, that pathway would be connected in the middle. Uh, this is an open lawn area here, which would have an overlook over to the beach and overlooking a paver plaza that could be used for um, concerts or um, outdoor picnic areas, just gallery spaces within the park itself. Um, if you have walked along the beach, uh, you usually are probably walking the sand line that's about this wide. Um, we're actually expanding the beach to make it wider to get the full effect of what the uh, existing beach, we beach is, same width. So widen the beach area to give more surface for beach goers to enjoy the sand area. Um, retaining the boat storage area for DJST, which is more or less in the same area, just, just would have a different surface material to accommodate that temporary storage. Uh, preserving the vegetation line along near our lane, so the pathways basically would be separated from uh, views more or less to near water. And then connecting up to the top side and restoring the wetland area with a boardwalk system that will go across uh, the restored wetland area. Embedded within open lawn space, the picnic areas and select shelters just for oak canopies for picnicking or for outdoor cookouts um, for park goers. And that all connect back into the parking area. Um, as you know, uh, Wee Beach, there's several berms. They, there's very opinions as to if those are good. Uh, but one of the benefits of berms are that they provide a uh, protection during storm surge. As you know, last November there was a number of storms that actually filled in this low area with a lot of sand that washed up from the beach. Um, so it would be a, a series of berm areas uh, between the grass and the beach that protect the overall lawn area from that possible storm surge and also just give a better stable, stabilized um, buffer between the park and the beach area. Here's a view if you were a bird. Um, over near Water Lane into the park area. Um, you know, the design is fairly simple in terms of materials, more looking at grass, pavers, and the pathway network, looking back towards Blue Beach Park itself. Um, some ideas about materials that we're thinking. Right hand side is a fairly simple shelter. Four posts would have a hard service below for the picnic tables or for chairs. 
On the left-hand side is a view uh, from the existing pavilion, pavilion towards Short Lane, where you have existing parking lots looking out towards the berms that would separate the beach from the lawn area. Uh, lower left-hand side is looking at uh, the paver plaza I mentioned, just in terms of the texture and surface material uh, for that outdoor uh, plaza area. And then the boardwalk going over the wetlands, we're looking at two options, either a concrete or a, a wood boardwalk. Uh, concrete has benefits and so does wood, and they also have different costs. So looking at the balance between those two in terms of making aesthetically pleasing uh, feature here to go through the wetland area. Um, not only to restore the wetlands was the idea, but also enhance the park with an environmental education uh, nature component to the park that users could enjoy and experience and learn more about environment in the park. Another view looking from the beach back towards wetlands and the open lawn space and the parking area. And finally our, our next steps in the process. So we're here tonight with a public hearing in a couple of minutes. Um, we're recording with utility companies right now and going through various reviews, including the Sewer Commission and EPC. Um, public hearings for each of those aspects. Then we finalize and design preparing, preparing big doc, documents for when funding is available. And in the best case scenario, bidding would be in the fall uh, and construction in the winter, but that's all pending to what funds are available and uh, what can be uh, funded now in your future. So. That's all I have. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Dan, <coughs> the road that currently runs over to where the boats are stored, yes. is that going to be removed? Yeah, so that is about four and a half feet lower than the beach, the top of the beach. So that will be filled in to be basically level. Um, and, and the retaining wall that's there now? That will be removed, been, yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, good, good point to bring that up. So that feature. Uh, the road is more or less, you can drive in, backwards, drive in and kind of down and around here right now. That's where the road is. Yeah. So that's all getting filled in uh, with the beach and the burns would be just to the side of that. Uh, but also access in terms of getting access to the boat storage. Uh, we're looking at the pathways providing the seasonal need to get boats into and out of the boat storage area. And pending the timing, uh, I know there's limited access coming from Nearwater Lane, but this um, driveway could be possibly open to negotiate with Nearwater uh, use uh, as permitted for those uh, two times a year uh, loading of boats. Uh, but most, all access would be basically coming from this pathway network down to storage and looping around. So our crew will have to have vehicle access as yeah. well okay. to maintain the lines. So it's just not, it's like going to be a gate, like kind of like um, Woodland Park, you have the gates up like, that the fire department can get to if they have right. to get through. Yeah. Right. But it's not it's for access. official use exactly. only. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And there is a, a fence there now, and they have to be improved just so it's not um, welcoming enough to have vehicle. I vaguely remember that we talked about moving the wetlands. Did this, they have a move or they, where they are? So, so the current wetland uh, is basically that shape right now. Uh -huh. There's actually one, two, three, and then there's a fourth wetland. Was that figure. the exchange you had to move it up there? So this wetland is being restored and enhanced with the To make up for the one we're taking away? To make up for the ones being removed. removed. Correct. Yeah. So the ones being removed are co closer to the paver plaza you're saying? There is a finger right here that would be totally filled in. So that hasn't been approved and that has to be approved? EPC is reviewing the application now. Okay. Thank you. But did you just say those are poor quality? Plans? They all are. Yeah. So they're all. Uh, they're it's like Phragmite and a lot of yeah. like invasive species exactly. there. And um, I know the JST is going to talk, you know, maybe later, and I, maybe this story brought up, and I'm sorry if you've already spoken to them. But if there's ever a building for sure. storage. Is it going to be right where it says boat storage? Is that what um, plan? you said? There was future possibilities. Yeah. So the plan you see here is not restricted on any future mm -hmm. desires for improvements. So if mm -hmm. there was a boat house, yeah. um, that takes the whole plan process as to what is the programming of that, what's the size, right. what's the stacks of it. Uh, so when we were we're programming a thing to space, right. likely be in here. Um, oh, closer to the closer to parking because that gives you a better access. Right. But we're also causing that how would that look in terms of blocking the views into and out of the park space? So yeah. that, that comes down to a, a design conversation as to 
how does that building function and fit into landscape? Right. Uh, I mean, it's not just for sale, it's just the whole idea of like, we were talking about kayaks and storage mm -hmm. and rentals and, mm -hmm. you know, making that. So, you know, yeah. it's like, I'm a little concerned that if we haven't thought this plan through that, that where is that, you know, where is it going to go? And boat storage is a bar on the other side. So, so. if the building went in, yeah. this likely would not would end go. up here. Right. But the reason why this is here is this is the best access into the water, mm -hmm. uh, splitting yeah, between the two over, yeah. uh, wetlands. So, I, I nothing here prohibits as to <clears> how <throat> to locate or the size of that building. Right. Uh, this could shift over, but I think they would have to just be thinking in terms of um, same volume of boats. Are you not using the kayaks? So that's a different user group. Mm -hmm. And would they be want? You know, would you be temporarily storing it here and walking down? Because that's pretty easy to drag a kayak along the beach, right. and you're not going to want to have users that are new to kayaking walking all the way down here and entering. We would want to drive our kayaks. Yeah. yeah. Anyone drive? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think we originally, when we were talking about that too, it was it was in the area of the vegetated berm. And yeah, it was the left of that here. Yeah. Right. Okay, right yeah. there. Yeah, and maybe, you know, can't leave it out over into the beach area mm -hmm. more, kind of like how the pavilion is introduced into the beach sand itself mm -hmm. uh, uh, down here. So. How many new parking spots are you adding? Um, that might be about 40 stalls, mm -hmm. I'm just guessing. I mean, the original, when we did Weed Beach 1, the reason we didn't do it is because we didn't want to be have a big giant parking lot. Mm -hmm. We were trying to keep, and the plan was actually to do those bricks, that, the, pavers. the pavers, remember Gravel that? Pave yeah, yeah, so pave. that you could drive over it, sure. but that it didn't look like straight on asphalt mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. That's the, I mean, it was never going to be a peak parking area okay. for us. But we did have short lane then, so yeah. that was a little different. Yeah. So the use is a little different. Sure. I like the pavers too, but they're really expensive too, I think. They are up there. They have a maintenance component to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's that total trade off. Right. It's just the heat. I think we were looking at things like, oh, it's going to be a hot surface, and we're at the beach, and now we'd make, yeah. make creating impervious surface area. Mm -hmm. But you're just like, there when you're parking, right? If it's not like you're hanging out in the parking area. No, yeah, but we, it was just that we didn't think that, it was overflow, so we, that area doesn't get used a ton except for sailing, typically, and when we have big events, so that's why we didn't, sure. that's, I mean, just to give you some yeah, background, yeah. it wasn't that. And to that point that we could treat the same way, mm -hmm. where this could be, say, just a paved loop for mm -hmm. connecting this, and then this is an overflow, if that's a desire. No, I mean, it's just some things to keep, they yeah. about for phasing, yeah. too, and, yeah. but just to keep it less like dark parking lot sure. and more. It'll yeah. never look that black. <laughs> no, nah, it'll be a way for but just that's the reason why we did it. That's and it would look nice with the grass No, it just you know, just water can get down if they needed to yeah, and mm -hmm, not yeah. wash it, you know, so if we have any flooding anyway. Well it's definitely something that we it's can. a long time ago. It still could be it still could be considered. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I think we should move to the public hearing portion of the program. This is an opportunity for our audience members to make any comments on the proposal we've just seen so that as the commission continues to work through this process, we can take those into account. So I would ask that anybody who would like to speak uh, to please move to the podium because we are being taped and recorded by Channel 79. And please state your name and your address. And we're limited to two minutes. Yep. Okay, please to start. Peter? Could you put the uh, slide back? It would be helpful. Is that the one you wanted? Yep. Okay. My name is Peter Wilson. I live at 186 near Water Lane. Um, I have three questions. The, the first is, I was under the assumption that the the former access to the property from near Water Lane would be permanently closed off. And I heard you say that there might be something like a welcoming gate there. Um, that didn't quite make sense to me, given what I, maybe I'm mistaken about what the agreement was, but there's, as those are private roads, you don't really need a gate because no one could go down and park there and walk in. Dan, do you want to address that? Uh, there was no uh, mention of, of a welcoming gate there. Uh, the mentioning of that drive apron would be that they negotiated with that private drive for a two times a year for loading boats. If that's negotiated with the homeowners association or the community, then that's something. But that's not a 
permanent point of access to the park. Okay. I think what Dan was suggesting is when we consider the access that for DJST to once or twice a year need to move the boats on and off property if the Norton Bay neighborhood would consider allowing us to open the gate to let them do what they needed to do and close it. Thanks. That, that clarifies. So that was, uh, my second question then, is, um, are new trees going to be planted on the east side of that property? Uh, yes. And what? And if so, what kind? Um, so we're still working the landscape plan of the trees, but we're first we're trying to protect as much of the vegetation along that street as possible in terms of impacting it and preserving it. The second is you'll see there's a couple of trees identified in the plan that are out from that forested edge, uh, likely to be deciduous uh, plant material of tree species, uh, whether it's an oak or a maple, just to name a couple. Uh, but the idea was to provide a buffer between New Orleans and the park itself. Okay. Um, third question, are there going to be any regulations uh, regarding skateboards and bicyc bicycling and, and roller skating on those pathways? Or do you anticipate that... Uh, that would be strange. You wanted which? Oh, I, I think we are encouraging that in terms of an area that you can go and walk, run, rollerblades, stroll, um, bike, something to keep people off the road. Okay. I think there was discussion of bicycles, skateboards I know has been a very hot button topic um, over the years because they, they were quite noisy. Mm -hmm. um, once upon a time, it was before you were with the town, there was a discussion of a skateboard park down there which many people were quite opposed to because it's just the, no the noise and the invasiveness. And, and I, I, I don't want to speak for you, Peter. I think you're That's getting the out. Foundation is, is of my question, right? yeah, I, I, just, I would like to ask, spot. though, if they're not allowed to skateboard in a park, where should they be skateboarding? I think that's a discussion for an hour. Yeah. From from How looking at the. Do you want to keep it at two minutes and then that's probably going back? I just want to make sure. Um, you know, it's kind of if Peter, you're good. One more quick question. One more question. question. I, think, I think we're fine. I know. Are there I any plans for any sports fields there? Not at this mm -hmm. time. Like soccer and yeah. Okay, thank Not you. This time. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Is that two minutes? Do you want me to raise my hand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I think for the moment we're. Oh. Okay. Look, if I were going very long, then we'll go Um. Is there anybody else? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Bob Green, 23, near Water Mike. Uh, could you just describe what you mean by restored wetland? What 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 is that? Sure. Entail? Yeah. So the first thing is to eradicate all invasive species, which are uh, pretty you know they're in there. That's pretty dense. Um, that's a multi-year process where depending on the species, either you might be pulling, you might be um, select spraying a specific species, racking the species, and then overseeding and planting to add more vegetation that's wetland species, native species, into the wetland area. But it would still be designated as wetland? Yes, yes. So the idea is to, to not only make the wetland what it is, the size now, but actually make it larger. Uh, and that's what I was pointing out. The line here, there's, as, there's a couple of wetlands. There's a wetland pod here, one, two, and three, and there's actually a finger here. So as we're moving this wetland, we're going to make this one larger by mitigating the impacts of this wetland to here, but also restoring it by making it more of species dense um, and a better sustainable wetland in that area. Okay, and uh, the second question, and it was covered, but I, again, I may not, not have fully understood it. On a daily basis, when the DJS, uh, the uh, sailors access the boat storage as it's currently configured here, yeah. what would their access be along the beach, along the, they would come from the parking lot and walk along the paths, what, what is the... So in terms of a sailor getting dropped off there for their day, they would get dropped off in the parking lot, walk along the path, or walk along the beach to the boat storage for their daily activities. Okay, having had three kids go through the, the program with a different access, so just curiosity. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hello, uh, John Whipple at 50 Hanson Road. So um, 
I am Mr. The Chairman of the Board of the DJST. So first, thank you very much for accommodating us in this plan. Um, just a few comments. Um, you know, this is we're uh, over 40, 40 years going on now. We had 70 sailors last year. We hope to have the same number this year. Um, it's about 40 families. This is a good, viable, I think, hopefully long-term program. So again, thanks for accommodating us, uh, at least in part of the plans. A um, couple things of note, you mentioned access. Um, we don't bring boats in and out that often, but our, one of our key things we at least had last year and a couple years before, we do have regattas during the season, not posted here, but we do bring some of the opties um, out during the season. So it would be not twice a year, but it's, I think we had three or four regattas last year, so probably more like six times a year we move boats in and out. Um, in terms of boat storage and potentially a tent slash building, you know, we had a building years ago um, which was destroyed in Sandy, um, and Chris Deke, who's our program director, can speak to exactly like what our ideal needs are, what we'd like actually realistically, and then sort of like minimum requirements. But you know, we do have a we do have quite a number of opties we use every day, um, and you know, we do have in a given day we'll have up to 25 to 30 sailors. We do need access to boats, and in terms of the sort of some place for the counselors to go, the students to go for teaching in either bad weather or just during when you're not on the water. Um, having something looks honestly probably a little larger than what's pictured there in terms of boat storage. Um, I think boat storage is also a tad misleading in the sense of we use it sort of day to day before we picnic. We currently we set up these, we bring all volunteers down there, we set up temporary tents and picnic tables and so having a little space for that and it's not permanent in the sense of you know, big lights and things, but just a place where people could go and, and uh, congregate is very helpful. Um, and in terms of access to the beach, we do need, you mentioned the building sort of farther away. I think ideally if, the, if that building or even just sort of covered area were used by DJSC on a daily basis, having it closer to where the boats are so the students aren't traveling back and forth and having access to the water um, for those boats on a daily basis would be very, very helpful as well. Um, yeah, Chris, sorry, as I said, the program director has a little more comments on sort of specific needs of bullpen vote, et cetera. So. But we have you on the agenda. Oh, never mind. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought this no, was part of it. Okay, well, yeah. I jumped ahead then. Okay. <laughs> Then we oh, sorry. Okay. This, and then we have you. <laughs> and then we we'll have you on the oh, agenda. But that's fine. Okay. That's fine. And I think it's no helpful for it's it's certainly certainly the right way. <laughs> other other public comments? And we will close the um, the public comment portion of, of the meeting and uh, open it up for any further discussion on the, the proposal from, from the commission. Questions of Dan while we have um, Can you go over the um, length of the path, please, that you're proposing? Like, what, give me a guesstimate. I'm not asking you to run it, um, just to give an idea. Because like, we're, we're saying that we're going to do maybe potentially bikes, you know, I just want to. The see. length of it, I would say, is a quarter of a mile. I just right. want to guess. Uh, so, I'm totally guessing uh, in terms you of that. Can guess, you can guess. Uh, information. Yeah, I you can guess. Yeah, I know you can come back. I can get it for you. So, you know, there was a question about skateboarders, <laughs> yeah. and I really think that this is not a desirable place for skateboarders. Mm -hmm. And I know that they go anywhere, but the the setting of this, they want places that they can jump and slide on a rail or go on a long curb or um, do an activity that's risk taking, should I say? Um, this is not so much of that, those features aren't really embedded in this plan, just for a reference. So being mostly grass, uh, mostly lawn and pathways, um, you know, even say the pavers, they don't like riding on pavers because there's too much bumping and movement and they lose their balance. So I don't foresee that, I can't say they won't come, but I don't foresee that they would be encouraged to come to a site like this. What is the width of the path? The path that we're proposing here, there are some that are eight feet wide and some that are five feet wide. So, what's the material like? I know that that looks like a wooden thing that's elevated on water. Yeah, that's the. But the rest of it is. What we have it? asphalt for the pathways, and yeah, some are asphalt. stone dust. So, like the more loop up to the boardwalk would be yeah. stone dust approach to a wooden boardwalk. We think the pathway is large enough to accommodate the boats coming either from. <clears throat> Near water or coming across yes. the parking lot? Yes. So um, it comes down to 
the drivers and how they turn. So I don't know if you're taking off these with a trailer with a hitch or if you have, so if you have a hitch, so say it's in the back of a car, it's the maneuvering of that vehicle down and dropping off the trailer into the bookstore area. If they're just pulling with a um, hand truck, I don't know if you're using those at all to pull in and out. Yeah, sometimes, Both. so. <laughs> pardon? Both. Both, so that's easier, and you know, the width of those, mine at home is maybe six feet wide, so you would have any problem going on uh, down that pathway. Um, it's different than what's happening now, which is access is there. You drive literally on the beach to get to the boats. Right. Um, um, that's a nice benefit to have to get to this. Mm -hmm. um, but you no, know, it's also the balance between that access and how the park is all the other times of the year. So, how about how large is the boat storage? Is it changed in size to what they have currently, or is it smaller? I mean, um, it's small to me, but I, it's, yeah, it's hard to tell from that. I don't have me. exact dimensions. We took roughly the size of what we saw the boats clustered uh, on the current asphalt pad that's down there. Mm -hmm. but I believe that that that's pad is, uh, The pad, I think, there now is, I think, a lot larger. Um, there's more space between the boats, and there's even some larger is there a larger Capri or an O'Day? I don't, a larger boat that's down there? I'm, I don't remember what I Wait, saw. Wait, so you're saying this is smaller? This is smaller. There aren't all dinghies or opties that are down there. Um, I don't know. Um, it's just the reason why there's space so far apart, I've been down there a lot, is because it's hard to move them. If, yeah, you, know, like you have to the lift kids them up and move inside. Yeah, and so it's drop. The, that space is actually not, you know, it can't be packed sure. tight. Because then these little kids can't take the dolly and yeah. put them on and flip them on. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like there's potential to increase it. We can make that to the yeah, size, we make, talk to them. have a conversation as to what the optimal size is for that maneuverability. Mm -hmm. um, it can be the size is desired, so. Um, yeah, we have to leave it open. Just practice. Like the whole thing? Yeah. How about the paper plaza? How big is that actual area? Um, like, how many people do you think could stand there or watch a performance or whatever we plan to use that for? Or that is probably, and I didn't bring the plan with dimensions on it, that is probably 35 feet across, maybe 15 feet back. So there were, the original thought was that if you had someone playing music or having a performance or clown, that that would be the stage setting and people could sit on the, uh, the, the lawn area overlooking kind that Kind of like plaza. the great lawn in Central Park. Kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just how many picnic tables? Would it just be where the... We didn't place picnic again? tables of how many, but... At we could put them anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I think there was some discussion. You'd have them under the one. Right. Yeah. Right. I didn't know if it would just be in those covered locations or if there would be other ones. I think there would be scattered other ones. Yeah. But the potential of being able to rent out some of the shelters for a small family party mm -hmm. is the intent. Is that area completely flat, or is that showing contours? I can't tell. Um, where it's where it says area. open lawn area, yeah. people. So that's actually higher than the paver plaza. So. Oh, so you're looking down yeah, at the pavers. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's maybe three That's feet nice. higher than pavers, so you're actually sitting on a little bit of elevated looking down. And when you were there now, the area that we cleared out, right. now there's, it dives. It, yeah, it really it's dives. It, 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 so, it's so, so that's going to be filled in, really, that's where that is. Yeah. That so you're plaza. saying it's going to stay low? No. No, no, you're going to fill it. You're going to fill it still. Like to the it. top of the wall. You know the wall that's there, the stone wall? Right. It's so. About well, I know it's, a, it's a I know gradual yeah. slope down. Would you say? But the stone wall is going to be covered by the beach, so it doesn't matter. Stone right. wall is going to be removed. Yeah, removed because yeah. it's going to be beach now, all all the mm -hmm. way in. Yeah, because right now you, what what's now grass, you can't walk from there down to the beach. It, no, it's dipped it's, and it's dipped with all that it's <laughs> rolled out. It. So that whole area has to be filled significantly. Yes. So in terms of flooding, uh, Dan, like what is? Where is the 100-year mark? Is there a 100-year flood or whatever? Um, the 100-year flood elevation. I mean, I know that sounds like a, but it is somewhere there, right? The actual whole area is... In the flood zone, um, I guess. I believe it's a flood hazard area. Mm -hmm. um, right, Carolyn? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like three, <laughs> yeah. They live right across the street. Yeah, it comes right through to near Waterloo. Oh, God, yeah. I want to say it's three feet above the house. Yeah, it's probably not Oh, right. <laughs> so yeah. the materials that we're proposing will accommodate that? I mean, like, it'll wash, you know, like, is it going to be okay for that? Yeah, so stuff? that's actually one uh, reason why we propose consider the concrete boardwalk mm -hmm. so that if there is a flood event and it gets back to there, mm -hmm. that that's what will stand a storm a lot better than a wooden boardwalk, but it's obviously cost difference. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having some burned areas is going to help to, I want to say, block the flood events coming into the park area, but um, mm -hmm. just as the lower beach park area is protected more now than it was in the past. Um, so. It's that balance between locking it and having buffer and making it aesthetically part of the party. Um, I just have a question about the parking area. Pam, I mean, I don't know if you have any particular opinion on this. Versus, and going back to what Susan was saying about having a lot of asphalt down there. Um, has there been thought to just doing gravel in that area versus doing the asphalt, or what would be the pros and cons of that? Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't thought about gravel. Okay. It, it, we, today it's just a sand mm -hmm. overflow right. block. And, um, you know, we, we've been asked, would we want to have it cleaned up and paved? And I think the answer is yes, but could it be nicer and have a grassy pavers, which would be beautiful. You know, it all comes down to money. Oh, for sure. I do. But then, you know, so there's the grass pavers, there's asphalt, and then there's gravel and having it roped off somehow. Um, and I just don't, in, in terms of cost, if we, mm -hmm. if it comes down to it. Yeah. Gravel wouldn't be my first choice if my own. Yeah. The no, for the, the parking lot. Yeah. 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 Right. So that's something that we can balance if we're getting that. In theory, we're going to be using the space. A lot more people will be using the space. So when we did that, that was overflow. And now we're kind of providing more amenities. So in theory, more people are going to be coming. Mm -hmm. So we do need more defined parking. Right. Yeah. And just, oh, this is here, mm -hmm. you know, right. or the extras. Right. So it makes sense to have more of a parking area, I think. I think right. so, too. I think it cleans up nicely, too. And I, I, I it kind of looks kind of stepchildy there now because there's not, it's not very clean. Mm -hmm. It's very messy. Mm -hmm. And you know, nobody really takes care of it. And now it's being upgraded. So right. it needs kind of more attention. I think so, too. It's something more people would use as a picnic area as opposed to the current picnic area, which is very remote. It's kind yeah. of dark. It's buggy. It's mm -hmm. just really set away from from everything. That sure. We would retain that for you know. The because there's no beach area at that picnic area. Right. 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 It's just kind of like you know, it's very short, shallow there, yeah. especially that end, right after the. Right. the, the um, it's just got beautiful water views too, because mm -hmm. you're up, you're up higher. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. But you're, you're definitely thinking about where you, I know you've been asking for kayak storage. Are we going to have kayak storage down there next year, or how's that going? Yes. 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 Where's that going to be? Sorry, you didn't make the lottery. It's okay. <laughs> I can get it. Uh, but but where, yes, we have you, where is it gonna be? two mm -hmm. two racks of. Where would they, they be placed? Though? Um, you know, right now we're thinking right where the the um, the kayak rental storage. Area is I know, right, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. So right kind of where DJST the, drops off right now, really, mm -hmm. yeah. so with their tent yeah. and everything. Yep, yeah. and then we have we'll have three at Pear Trees, so we have uh, seventy five all together, mm -hmm. and they're already sold out, and we have one hundred and twenty people still on the waiting list. Oh my gosh! So the need is there, mm -hmm. and um, our guys are looking to to build maybe one more. Mm -hmm. Hard. Are yeah. those also considered like? Um, did you say kayaks, paddle boards? As paddle boards, I think they allow it to. Paddle boards and kayaks. It's for the spot now. Paddle boards are just It's just, I mean, it was, I mean, I, you know, I did have one this past season, and I know going back and forth with it was kind of a, you know, now we're, you have to take them out at the end of the season and stuff. So if you do do a, have a, a, a year round place to put things, I right. think you could charge more for that too. Right. Just sure. another option. I'm just sure. throwing that out. Is a revenue generator, so yes. I, mean, I think people would just, be willing to pay for that. Just from what we just built up now, we um, brought in fifteen thousand. Yeah, just from and, that. Yeah. Just for that short period of time. So, mm -hmm. I think my biggest concern is still about what we're going to do with if we do ever do a structure down there where mm -hmm. it can where be. Where it's going to be. Because yeah. I just feel like if we put something together and 
you know, how does it situate with the paver plaza and all but that? But I think, Dan, if you, to your point, I mean, we've widened the beach. Mm -hmm. I think when I look at what comes to mind is, is Fairfield's mm -hmm. um, facility. Mm -hmm. They have two facilities right on the beach, mm -hmm. and it leads right into the sand. So there's no reason I don't think why we couldn't have this area here for the building, you know, in that area. I mean, that's where originally where it was in our original I'm plan. Not sure if that's like allowed because of EPC, because you know I now we can't do something. So it's something that we'll know, have to continue you know. to. So that's the only concern. I think we are a long, long way. I, I, I agree, but I don't want to plan something with the idea that we're never going to have it. You know what I mean? Like if there there should be a placeholder or something mm -hmm. that if we had to change it, it wouldn't be oh my God, we have to tear out something we've already done right. that we spent a lot of money on. But did we not say that that was the placeholder? Yeah, is so, placeholder? I mean, everything we've seen here is, would be fairly incidental to a building of a building. Mm -hmm. um, no pavers, you can take the pavers out, mm -hmm. you can take the pathway out, and mm -hmm. that's all going to get uh, torn up if you have a building that goes in. So, I, I would not be restricted by it. if a building went in and of a certain size, we didn't even know what the program of that building would be to get the actual dimensions of it, but nothing here would restrict where that could go and how you would lay it in. Uh, you know, you might say we want to have storage for the boats or for the kayaks permanently in that, you know, under that building or around the building. So that would change how that layout is and access to the beach. So I don't see anything here that's restricting you from future use of this space for structures or those interests for me. Everyone wants to stay away from the viewers. I know, I know, I understand. <laughs> I mean, my other concern is definitely getting the boats back and forth. It sounds like they need it more than the two times a year that was already mentioned, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure near water is realistic to them, you know what I mean, as mm -hmm. for neighbors, because they, they do, the regattas come on top of each other. It's not like it happens every week they have one, and I don't know if that's going to be allowed by the neighbors for them to bring the boats out. And they, they typically bring, I mean, when, when my son was racing with them, mm -hmm. it was like six boats. You know, it's not incident, you know, it's not all 40 boats or whatever they have, right. but there, there are, it's going to need a car to come in. And but the, I think that's going to have to be coordinated, just right. like our staff yeah. is out there. There's going to be times when there's limbs that come yeah. down and we're going to have to have access yeah. into the pathways. So it will have it's to like be driving through Tilly. Yeah, I mean, you're talking that. about seven weeks in the summer. Right. And that's you know, okay. And we can coordinate it. I'm confident about that. Okay. Hey, commission members, any other questions? Mm -hmm. right, well, uh, could you repeat for everybody the um, schedule? I know you're, or we will be attending different meetings. Um, yes. To move. So Dan and I are, I'm scheduled to do the sewer commission on Tuesday. March 5th, Tuesday. which is this coming Tuesday, and Dan and I both will attend the EPC on March 6th um, for this project. And that's it. Right Utility now. coordination is ongoing with Eversource. Wait, well, we'll be meeting with Eversource though too. Yeah, to be determined. To be that. Do you want to just talk about the... Um, the wetlands and forgetting what they were called. We were, we were going to hold off on that just recently. Uh, the boundaries. Uh, so, are, so part of the process for the design of the boardwalk, we had to do some borings around the wetland area. So we're holding off until the sewer commission meeting to have that go through, and then we'll have borings completed. So you know what the soil conditions are for our foundations um, for designing that. So that's coming up soon. Thank you. Yeah. Really nice so we'll through those and then report back on how those, yes. those discussions go. Those are next key, week. Uh, key meetings. Yeah. yeah, sure. Good luck. March twenty sixth. If if we even get any um, approval at that time, they may uh, like with EPC. We've already been there once. Mm -hmm. Now we're coming back next week. So sewer commission could very well say. So we need some time to, to right. think about the plans and come back to us again in April. April or, or whatever. So, as with everything, there are many steps, many, many steps to go through. Okay, okay so are we set on this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we set with Dan before he 
shoves off because we you know he has a long drive home. Oh, yeah. Unless Dan, do you want to stay for a few minutes? Wait, yeah, I won't. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, great. Then we will move on to the Darien Junior Sailing update. And we do have representatives here from DGST today, so we're looking forward to hearing how um, how the program has been going, how it is going, sure. hear a little bit about what, what your needs and your thinking are. Yeah, um, we can, in case you want to recap from last year, if you guys want to pass yeah, it around. Yeah, great to have What's you. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Just, it's just a little bit. Right. Um, yeah, so we had, as I mentioned, we had 68 sailors last year. 38% um, were new to the program, which is, uh, I think, one of the features we have versus other places around it. I think it's a, the idea of being a little more of a new to sailing, younger kids, you know, third, fourth graders join the program. Um, you know, 62% obviously were, were, uh, were returning. Um, Christy joined again last year after a couple year hiatus from the program. I decided having a more seasoned professional, honestly, running the program. It was, it was, it was a real benefit last year. Um, a couple of our counselors from last year agreed to come on again this year, which is nice from continuity there. Um, Sarah Mursky has joined the board also as a as secretary and sort of co-running this program with us as well. And, and Marat uh, was our, um, our treasurer, was treasurer last year. He's the uh, third member of the official board of directors, which oversees the association, which oversees the team, just like legally. Um, yeah, and so, you know, we'd love to have a discussion with sort of like what our needs are, et cetera. You know, we have, uh, you know, the exact numbers of actual opties and 420s we have, but it's yes, not inconsequential, but it's not. <laughs> so. We have. Chris, would you state your name? Chris, you want me to stand here? Whatever's comfortable for you, we just want to get around yeah, yeah, Christopher Deek, Director of Degree and Junior Sailing. Um, as far as hardware, the program has come along in the three or four years since our devastation. Forgive me, I've had, I couldn't speak over the weekend on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> and I all of a sudden realized I'm going horse here again. Too. Um, <clears throat> um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Number of books. Pardon me? Number of books. Oh, yeah, hardware. We have 25 optimists down there, six 420s, and five power boats. The power boats are stored off campus over um, in Stanford during the year. And then we have five moorings that are allocated towards us out, <clears throat> out in the road in Bay. What we lack is a permanent structure above us to weather um, the vicious thunderstorms that roll in at least once a season and scare the living daylights out of Mr. Deke and the 20 kids that are huddled down and whatever. So I'm all for having something above us. It doesn't have to be very fancy, but something, some solid structure because when we run and take off for the paddle tennis side, we have to run across the parking lot with the storm bearing down upon us with kids that just came running in off the water, so there's a safety issue, <laughs> whatever. Um, <clears throat> we did a study, as John said last year, we found out that about 60% of our students renew every year, so we have a legacy going. So we're not in a panic in the middle of the winter when we don't have our program fully stocked. We are fully um, uh, pupiled. Round about June 1st, we still have positions that will be open, but we take people in right up to the time the session begins in the beginning of the three sessions that we have. So we're a little more comfortable with that. Um, we, with the loss of the building, and I wasn't in the program when we lost the building in Hurricane Sandy, but when we lost the building, we lost a lot of the feeling of the whole program went out. And I have to say, one of the most positive things that occurred this year was the Boy Scouts stepping up to help us with a little bit of the equipment, a sail rack and um, a, a, man, a sail storage. That was unbelievable. It was one of the most positive things that happened to the program because we had the Boy Scouts come down, help out with the whole site, build this. And then when we step back, we had new equipment for the first time in four or five years and we could say, well look, we're, we're, we're re rebirthing ourselves. Of course, we have a long ways to go as far as that goes, but um, it's very, very positive. And um, we'd like to add more this year. Um, I'm glad to see that the bowl was a problem, the, the depression filling with water was a big problem. My God, even if you just filled that and left dirt on top of it, I'd be like, thank God, <laughs> because it's, it's, it's was quite scary there. You know, you have these smaller storms appear starting in September when the tides are very high and uh, 
it starts moving stuff around and you're like, oh my God. All of a sudden you sit up in bed at night and say, well, maybe I should have gone down and tied everything to a tree or something like that. So. Chris, is there a temporary structure that you have in mind that would be helpful? Yes. I would like a something like a pole barn that has a, an aluminum top and maybe 60 legs. I, in fact, I, took, I was looking at the structures that you had as far maybe two of those, mm -hmm. you know, would get us out of the sun and out of the weather. Um, that I would ask for. The other thing I ask for is keep the running water and the electricity all around the side. We have no electricity right now, right. but we do have running water. Mm -hmm. And that's great to have a shower over there to rinse the boats off in ourselves. You know, just here in the hot days. So I don't know the size, maybe the, what is the size of the pavilion covers? Um, I want to say it was like 10 by 20 or 8 by 16. You see, we 10 by 20 is what we have in the white tents mm -hmm. that are temporarily set up down there right now. That for right now, that would be fine. The thing is that the tent, the tent in a bad thunderstorm and it rolls across the bay, starts picking up yep. and blowing all over the place and that freaks everybody out. Because we were we recently purchased a tent, so I'm wondering about that. Um, because really, from start to finish, how many weeks? Eight. You know, you just give it a week to set up beforehand, and a week to take it down after. You can even leave it up till September 1st. I mean, I don't know. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Why don't I make an appointment to go see it with her and just say, oh yeah, this would work with this. Right, you won't. You won't be able to see it still wrapped up. Yeah. Well, what, and, whatever it's. And we haven't, we are. haven't even, um, we haven't even tempted yet to to put it up, which we need to do. Okay. So that's so I just, just, I'm just thinking. <laughs> I don't know that I want to leave it out there eight weeks. We you might know. be able to relocate one of the shelters we have planned into mm -hmm. that general area, so though it's not only for sailors, but when you're there, you're using it. But off hours, people can still use it. So it, mm -hmm. um, kind of claim it while it's. Season, you know, your season use, so right. that those easily we can place right. to. But I'm talking about like, for now, this coming season. You know, how do we? Yeah. How do we? What's the solution for? for perhaps this. I'll season? look at it as well. Show okay. me the specs, and I'll just. Yeah. I'll give I'm it, certain. I'll give I'm certain you'll like it. Yeah. I just I need yeah. to figure out whether I wrap my head around whether we would leave it there. You know, I, I don't know. It's it's, it's, it's brand spanking new, so we'll be using it for our event. We beach fest. And we'd be using it for other community. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, right. right. I have to look at it. Yeah. It's it's a, it's pretty. I forget the dimensions. Are 25 by 30. I mean, it's big. Oh, it's big. Mm -hmm. It's much more. Yeah, but it saying, breaks down into smaller ones oh, too. Right. So you're saying that would fit in more with your design of the bowl and the, the brick papers in the middle, someplace. I, I'm just simply trying know. to figure out okay. if there's a solution to help you. Yeah. Summer. Oh, yeah. Summer. Let's work on it. Summer. Yeah. Other than dimensions, we uh, for the last handful of years we've been storing all of our off-season sails and stuff that can't boats can stay out over the winter. Mm -hmm. Ideally, they wouldn't, but they do. Um, uh, in a warehouse in Norwalk, which is being sold, that's gone. So we actually purchased um, a trailer that's on a hitch, which is actually to store the stuff. So during the season, we can open up and use it, and the kids can store stuff overnight. Mm -hmm. But also during the winter, we actually had a place; otherwise, we had no place to put anything. So that was a problem. So we do own this, which is great. It's just white sides. There's no like. Mm -hmm. Logos and these things do say like 800 pack rat. That's not there, which is nice for neighbors, etc. Um, we do have this as well. So having a place to, I mean, it's a size of a pickup truck, so it can be stored anywhere. It can be stored here, but right. during the winter, some place out of a storm section right. during the off season would be great to somewhere in the town to put that isn't in one of our yards slash down there. It's probably not ideal either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that's a tough one. But more discussion on that another time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the size of two Where are you pictures. storing it now? Someone's lawn. No, it's right there. It's down there so right now. Like it's yeah, right here. It on the side. Yeah, I was like, we, we got it the, literally like. It's white. It blends in. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's nothing, nothing, nothing to it, but but when the storm hit in, in October, November, mm -hmm. which was like really nasty, you probably saw the pictures of mm -hmm. there was three feet of sand. sand. Oh, yeah. um, that was actually a, underwater. Um, so yeah. we, we got there and, and he and Diego, yeah, and we got down there and we salvaged everything. but. Having some place anywhere else in town to put it yeah. would be nice. And it's, again, it's just, it's just a white trailer. It's, it's like, not even at the waste, well, uh, is it waste water? Whatever. Yeah, I, I highly doubt that would be. Yeah. And Jim checked for us, and yeah, it, yeah. Uh, it's it's too much congestion in there for them to maneuver. Where the other four twenties for the high school are. But it's possible, right? And just the off, 
you know, in the um, the overflow parking in the very where the sewer yeah, I mean, plant is right there. We see usually a truck is parked out there. And, correct. You know, that's it's not much. Yeah, this is and it's just on a hitch, so it's, a, it's any truck can just sort of. Um, but in your plan too, having access, road access, that's another reason why mm -hmm. actually having at least an eight foot as wide. As far to get as road there, access that. goes, we just, whether it's tar or hard pack, what I call the stone dust, mm -hmm. as long as it's five or six feet wide, I said, we're not actively taking boats in and out, but once in a while we, we go to these regattas and we have to take five boats out on a five stack trailer yep. or whatever and get it out of there so that, you know. It's not, believe me, that's a lot, it's a lot of work to take to get sewer dots. It's the only fucking something, you know, but when we do do it, it's infrequent and it's it's not as though it's busy. Right. Whatever we have. But it is one of the selling points of the program. Cause, yes. Because other clubs in the area are more known for racing. So ours mm -hmm. is a little more junior, but I think, you know, like I know our two sons both raced last year. It was like the highlight of their summer. So having, having, not just once a year get a boat and out was literally well you're kind of bringing that back because i think when i first started you, you weren't yeah i've just gone dress it was just a couple yes. of, it was a, yeah we, it wasn't much but we are remember. we found in doing that study that i referred to um as far as legacy goes how many kids renew and just come back automatically we found that at age 14 there was a cliff there was a great interest in the optimists but there was not that big an interest in our program in the 420s anymore and it mm -hmm. fell off and they all disappeared and um they were going to the various yacht clubs and things. And the importance of that is is the Optimist and the 420s feed into the high school program, which is 420s, and then the high school feed into the collegiate programs on that. And Darian High came after me uh, about a month ago or so because they have no coach, and they wanted me to go talk to them, and I did. And I'm, I'm not qualified to be a coach in their program, but we exchanged, and I said, one of our goals in Darien will be to make sure, to try and make sure that we can feed that program right from our program right to you, whatever, and they will like deliver after you. Yeah, that's great. So I'm like, you know, that's one hand washing the other mm -hmm. in the tent. And he was like, yeah, that, that, that would help. Because right now, it's interesting, it's all girls on the team down there, there are no guys. And yet all of our instructors were all guys, there were no girls there last year. I don't know what's going on. We got to figure it out. So, we're trying to get we're, that, that's one gap. I said going from the optimist size to the 420 size. We want to firm up that 420 size a little bit. We have the boats there; they're just not being used. Um, as we have six of them, we only use two of them a season at this point. So. And have you gotten cost structure on, um, or an estimate on taking the boats away and storing them off season somewhere? I know they used. Yes, to it's a thousand dollars a boat. It's a lot. Is what our yes. Our, our, yeah. It's well, a thousand dollars. Donated last time. What? Linda had a place donated, I think, at one point. And mean? that's, that's oh, yeah, what we're that's, losing. That's, that's the not knowing yeah. that they were able to store them for yeah. free. Yeah. We had that, that wonderful that building to clean it yeah. yeah. over yeah. Norwalk, which was just the largest building I've ever it been in. It is amazing. There's, yeah, they're selling it, they're repaving it, whatever. And they, they, but they it was they a real idea together. to bring those right. boats over. That okay. was part of that. It was like, I had three of them stacked on my pickup truck. It was very hairy driving back to Eaton with them. I thought one was going to fall off. Mm -hmm. So it's not ideal, right. to be honest with you, because you have parents doing it, they're not professional movers. Mm -hmm. It's all volunteer. Right. So it's different. You know, Would so the boats like, fit in pods? Yes. In fact, What's there so were. The if you look at pictures of the program uh, in years gone by, we lost uh, a rack that was covered that looked like a garage, a lean to garage. Maybe you folks on New World Lane would know that they, it was sitting right in back of where the, uh, the kayaks were. And it, um, I had seen it the other day when I was, I have all the archives in my basement. <laughs> and um, I had seen it the other day and it was like two boats and it must have been like 50 feet long or whatever. And it was just this rack. Appar and I asked one of the counselors who had come up through the program in the last 10 years. And he said, yes, that was down there. And he says that covered the boats before Hurricane Sandy. Yeah, but, but it also broke the line. That's what happened. Those boats smashed into the oil line that caused the whole spill. Well, that was actually in, in the, the yeah, two-bedroom right. apartment. They were under in the garage, though. They stored them under Right. There. But on the far side, Susan, down by where the, the boats go into the water, there was another building that was uh, more of a shed, a lean-to shed, than right. it was anything right. else. It was and attached to the building, right? No. It wasn't? It was, the, the mm -hmm. one was... No, it was down there. Yeah. It was another yeah. building? Was yeah. it close? Yeah, well, the foundation is there. 
Yeah. I mean, that, that's why I, I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking around. That's more than 10 years ago because I yes. was there. Like, yeah. 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 I wonder if there's a picture of it. I, I'll bring them in. I have them. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to bring them with you. Winter project. It's right there, and the foundation is in there. Anyway, that's okay. yes. In answer to your questions, there was pod storage or something like it down there years back. But uh, due to the nature of how the site is designed, with that depression in there and prone to flooding, uh -huh. it's no longer there. <laughs> okay. If anyone wants, we have a little. I'm not going to show it now. Same time. We have a little format video our counselors put together with the two little drones and the kids. And so if I, I'm happy to email the link over. So oh, I actually have it if you want to watch it now, but I just I didn't want to like take everyone's time. But it's a little. Yeah, um, you can email. Yeah, some of us are driving a bit away, so. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, it's it's we we showed it at the end of the year when we give out little little awards to all the kids, and there was like most of the kids got their picture at least in there. So that was great. That's great. I'd yeah. love to see it. Yeah. So, so and we appreciate very much the use of the paddle tennis side in the off season. There are one or two days every season where I just can't take it. Being on the beach, I have to go in here, turn the AC on, and just sit in the office. <laughs> and think there's a least. I mean, I love the beach. That's why I like this job or whatever. But let me tell you, there's always one or two days where I'm, when the kids go out on the water, I'm like, oh my god, I got to get out of here. Of and, I'm, and I'll go over there and I'm like, I'll pray to the air conditioner gods. <laughs> and the end is, we are end of season sort of wrap up there too, and we had little drinks and pretzels for the kids, and that was that pal was really nice for that. Great. They decorated the little, little flags up and stuff. So. <laughs> Um, I have a question. Yes. I know that the team had previously tried to raise money for a, 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 a building. Yes. Is that money, or was there money that was collected? There was. That? No. There was no money that was ever collected, and this winter... There was committed money, maybe, right? There was, and I'll tell you what it was. Um, that being said, I realized that our website had no place, no GoFundMe page, or a link to donations. There, there was one. It, I took there it is off. one. I took it off. Right. Like, randomly donating to a website, like I don't know where the money's going for. I took it away just because it was like, yeah. if we have no like use for the money, who are we giving money to? So I, I removed it off the webpage. The, the yeah. Darien <laughs> Foundation, uh, going back five years ago or so, had committed $150,000 when we were looking to do pilings and site studies. But we would have had to have raised dollar for dollar. So we would have had to come up with another $150,000 to do that. Um, and that held open. And they're very, very generous. And I don't know whether the offer is still there. And I don't know how we would work that. I don't know whether I'd want to get into fundraising in the off season right. or whatever. But um, we have been very fortunate in that some of our boats, our power boats, have been donated to us through our connections in Stanford, with who's maintaining it. Um, he always has an ear out for someone who's just, my God, the kid's Boston Whaler's been in the backyard for. 15 years collecting mold, can you get it out of here? Who do you know? And we've been very fortunate to have that occur, you know, for us on that, and take advantage of it. Um, as far as actual cash coming in, no. Um, but we've, we've now begun to realize in this day and age, we should have a slot somewhere on the site that says, and by the way, you know, if you want to write out a check for more than just the kid's tuition or whatever, we're willing to, to take or something. Pardon me? You get, that could be used for scholarships if you don't have a building need to. Yes, there is. Uh, the other thing that I found out too, and I've opened up a relationship with, there are two other programs. I don't know whether you guys um, knew this. In we belong to something called the Junior Sailing Association of Long Island Sound, mm -hmm. which is 20 cooperatives uh, bring the sound, and we share races and all kinds of results. Make a long story short, there are two other organizations that are run just like Darien, is that are not yacht clubs, Oyster Bay and North Stonington, Connecticut. And I've been in touch with both of them because it's just interesting. Oyster Bay and North Stonington are sponsored by towns. And Oyster Bay's program is probably 15 years old and has 26 board members and sponsors scholarships and has kids from the inner city coming out. But it goes into this all the stuff that you know, I'm not really willing to get into right now. We're right. just trying to keep our program going and, right. and sustain it. Uh, but when you looked at the program, you said, holy Christmas, in Oyster Bay, their biggest problem for years is where to put them. Yeah. And the town didn't have the land or anything to do it. They finally had a, um, an old Navy installation that's down on the water that they actually gave them to, so they're all set up. But 
Um, and the other one that I don't know too much about, I don't know them, is North Stonington. And again, they're my go-to people because they're run <coughs> under the auspices of the town. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I said, Oyster Bay, it's like that program is huge. Huge. That's great. Thank you. Thanks for the background. Mm -hmm. We very much appreciate having you come in and give us an update. We want to make sure we keep the dialogue going. I know it got a little quiet for a while, so I think it's important as we're thinking about the beach and its development and, and your needs. You know, we do want to keep that front of appreciate it. I think it's important for us to know too because it's to do all this future planning and not know the future of this program because since I've been here too, I mean there's been times where it's but we're unsure whether or not mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the program yeah. is going to be done. <laughs> so totally. here we are trying to you know put you in a certain place, and and it's important that we know that the the, the program's healthy, mm -hmm. and who's in charge, and who you know like for instance the the last fan of came and spoke last year is no longer here, right? Is he moved to Carolina? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and that happens because of these sure. positions. Yeah. Mine is a paid I'm position, so. and I make no bones about that. They're volunteers, right. and it's you know times change. Family commitments changed, and he would have stayed, but they decided they were. They'd been 20 years in Darien, and they, they went to the Carolinas, you know, money, etc., and so on. So, sure. understandable. It's yeah. just a, good yeah. to keep the dialogue here, yeah. so we you know you're happy and what your needs are, and you know what we can do to help. And I try to keep a dialogue open with Jim, because it's good. Jim mm -hmm. Coughlin mm -hmm. works for Pam, whatever. So, great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you for coming in. Great. Do you need us, or can we stay, or do you want you us to stay? You are welcome to stay, but you do not need to stay. Okay. We're what are you going to be speaking about? Okay. Us again, or the beach, or? No, that we're moving on to the other beach in town. Okay. <laughs> Gertrude Point. Yes. Yeah. Before I forget, I don't want the video. I can send them. So, uh, moving on to the update on uh, the pear tree improvement. Uh, Mike had intended to be here uh, this evening, but something he, I guess, did not agree with that. So, he's a bit under the weather. So, he did send a written report. Um, we'll make sure it gets attached to the minutes, but I will, I don't want to read it word for word. Um, he recaps in here the charge of the building committee, which I believe everybody here is familiar with, so I won't go through that, you know, go through that. Um, but the committee did go through the selection process. Uh, I think you all knew from the last report that they did receive five proposals um, within the town submission deadline. That was, um, of the five, two exceeded the published budget and were disqualified. They were both considerably over the amount of money that were available. And from there, the committee invited the three remaining participants to come in for interviews, which were held on January 31st. Uh, we spent about an hour with each firm. In addition to the, mem the entire membership of the building committee participated, and in addition, um, I was able to participate as well as Pam, of course, Jim Coughlin, uh, Jim Flynn, I think most of you know, uh, Ed Gentile, who is the Director of Public Works, uh, Pam, as I mentioned, and Jeremy Ginsburg. So we have good representation from town representatives as well. Um, they're very interactive interviews. Um, all of the interview firms did a great, great job. We had a lot of really interesting and good discussion about you know, what needs to happen over at the beach. Um, a lot of the focus was on, you know, really protection of the beach and the property itself and the sustainability discussions again about wetlands and flooding and, you know, not solely just like, you know, what are we doing coastal, coastal restoration. restoration. But it was a lot of discussion on coastal restoration. We did talk about, you know, that the parcel, I think, is even, could, could be considered at risk if we don't really focus on restoring it properly. Um, so, and then 
the committee just finished the interviews that day, had some discussions, and then went back and had their following meeting on February 6th. It's a long time ago already. Um, and it was a very difficult decision. I'll say because Dan is still in the room, but it was a very difficult decision. Um, but the committee did decide to go with land tech because they were, the, the three were all so close and so strong in so many ways that feeling was to go with, you know, to go with the low bidder. So at this time, the committee is working with Nantech on contact regulations. Okay. That's where we are. So nothing's been firmed up. We're still kind we're of just working on that. Yeah, we're still working on that. Could you talk a little bit about why they chose that? What was the deciding value that made the difference for the last three? Just, well, yeah, it, it's, it definitely came down to price. It was price, yeah. It definitely came because each one of them had different qualities and different, um, you know, I think Land Tech at one point really came up with a creative way of wanting to flood proof oh. and restoring the buildings, which was really very interesting to the committee. Mm -hmm. um, but we had to go back and try to talk to the state about that, whether that was even you're able to even do that, so there were some questions there about that, but the creativity side of that, of having the possibility of really restoring was interesting to the committee too. Of the existing group. Yeah, but that was that, that was that group. Then, you know, Neil had his, you know, vision, and then uh, Schmidt had, had their vision. They were all very different. They were They're all different. very good. And so, really when it came down to it, we really felt that we were being stewards of the town to um, watch our money. Okay. And, and to have a little bit of buffer at 136, which was the lowest right. at 136. And that really tilted the scale. Okay. Thank you. So it, was very, it was very difficult. It was very difficult because all the, I mean, all the proposals were excellent. A lot of the information. Like you said, very different, too. It was, it was a great day, actually. It's a really good day. Yeah, we were really lucky. They, we had five, but two were yeah. way, way so three is still good. And they were yeah. and they were great proposals too, but they were just out with themselves. Way yeah. mm -hmm. way out there. So we will have more to update you on in the March meeting. Yeah. The the building committee meets again on March sixth. Yes. The okay. meeting? Yes. Yep. Okay. So that's really all we have have on that for now. Uh, oh, now we have regular public comment. <laughs> Do we have any public comment? I have a question. Did, All right. Did, did this get cut last night by the Board of Selectmen? I mean, yes. on Monday night? This which? We're on pear Excuse tree. Excuse me, I'm sorry, we're, I'm not on pear tree. You're right. You I'm not talking about pear tree. Um, I'm going back to weed. Yes. Yes. Well, that's very disappointing. Yes. Okay. They have given us, well, they are proposing to give us some money. Of course, it still has to get through the Board of Finance and the RTM. Can the right. RTM add money back? Um, I'm confused what was that. The Board of Selectmen cut the short lane project oh, right. last night. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't cut it, they deferred it. Um, they felt that Highland um, property um, was. Had, you know, it was a little bit more important at this point. It's a larger prop property. Um, we're trying to get people on it to use it. Um, so that six hundred thousand dollars went toward the Highland Farms property, and they knew that pear tree is coming down the pipeline. And uh, apparently, there's uh, some uh, news from the governor had come in, and that they really needed to tighten up. Um, so they didn't fund short, and they gave it fifty thousand dollars for some improvements. And, um, but I will tell you that um, uh, Darian Athletic Foundation has um, spoke, uh, we, we've talked, and he, they're looking to update their master park plan, their master plan, I should say not park plan, their master plan, and they're looking for some ideas. So I'm going to speak with them next Wednesday um, of some ideas that we may have, and short lane is one of them. So we will see. The Athletic Foundation? Yeah. In terms of the running, biking, walking, trails throughout that would connect both sides of the beach, uh, the 25 acres. So it's, you know, it is exciting. It's a possibility. They may buy into it and, um, you know, be excited to, to uh, be part of that project. And as well as other things. Jamie, Jim, and I are meeting on Friday to talk about other projects that we may have um, 
as part of our department and the town and parks um, that they might also be interested. They're, they're really looking to look for projects. Well, how about the sailing stuff? Mm -hmm. I mean, and the, the boat storage. I mean, and I was, when I mentioned, asked Chris about the money mm -hmm. that was raised, because that was a big uh, push to get it. They even got a, a matching grant, basically, from the Darien right. Foundation for it. So I think that if there's a way for them to do some of that, mm -hmm. especially for their piece, Mm -hmm. Which is the structure, right? I mean, that's you know that that'll be helpful, and also any revamping that needs to be done in their area, right? That could right. be something. Part to of it had it already talked to John yeah. about it and get. I mean, because the athletic foundation that's that's right. a team sport. Yes. it's a sailing team. Yeah. So yeah, it's been one of the ideas that we have. We're going to so. put some ideas on paper on Friday, and then and see. Uh, I think that will be an ongoing discussion with them. Too. How much should we go to the board selectmen for? Shortly. We went for five hundred thousand, and then they said, "Gee, let's do the parking lot," and mm -hmm. indicated they were going to give us six plus, mm -hmm. and then it was a complete. So you went high, and they gave you none, basically. You're saying but you went for the we went lower lot. than what we needed. They said, "Why don't you just put it all in there? We're going to the most likely bond this, and then they said the other night they, they I, I understand that they Probably very didn't. much wanted to fund it, right. and if it had been two weeks ago, they would have funded it. But because of the new news of mm -hmm. Yeah. Some cuts in the state. They really felt they needed. Mm -hmm. made, they needed to make a choice, and um, mm -hmm. you know the choice of you know they this parcel they put money into. It's an active park as it is. It's got a lot of things going on within the park, whereas Highland Farms hasn't yet begun. Mm -hmm. And I could, so I can see I can see some racing. But that's not really all the other property. Though. No, it's not. It's not. not. It's that's, not. That's but we will be managing it. I know. So but that's I what's disappointing it. to yeah. me is this is really it. a park proposal that is not. Part of part of part of we really have any and that say is a in. town, right. you know, thing. Right. I, that you happen to be taken care of. Which is, so I completely see. Well, I'm very, I'm very disappointed. Oh, no, I was really right. excited about the opportunity to see well, that. Thank you. That was like seven thousand dollars. That was what happened. Uh -huh. Short term, heading into this summer, with short name. Well, I, I'm very thankful that they put at least the fifty thousand dollars in there because I think that will help we us. We talked to Dan about it. Will fill the the area. Oh, good. good. Yeah. So I think oh, we'll good. be able to maybe do that sloping lawn. Oh. You know, oh, right. and maybe not the pavers, maybe not the side, the pathways, but we can talk. You know, maybe I'm an optimist, thinking that the <laughs> Darien Athletic Foundation might find this very, and we just met with them uh, about a biking program that Jamie and Jim are jumping on, okay. and it was really exciting. It was about getting kids on their bikes and getting them off the streets and having a place to learn mm -hmm. how to bike and become mm -hmm. a, kind of a team. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. um, they're looking at our parks, and really, quite honestly, we'd be just one of them. And if That's we can great. connect it, it could be a great place to, to so, bike. Uh -huh. so. so the depression that you're talking about from the grass down to the beach, that, that will be filled in the we, summer? Well, I yeah. have to price it out. I, again, summer. don't forget, I that money that you just, just said yes to, if we get it, is not available until July 1st. Yeah. Okay. So really, you know. Probably well, not too much. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. they're not able to see it and do everything. No, not this summer. Fall. Fall. So uh, we're we'll like, work with, you know, Dan and, and see what, public, you know, pull up the money. Public, public Works has a, um, a lot of fill that they're, mm. um, wanting to give us for that area mm -hmm. too so we'll see that's why we're still going forward with the so approvals yes. absolutely right. go through the, with the approvals yeah great yes. good idea. i really think we should should press it up with that it's a good idea thank you for that update but if you're welcome oh, you did make me sad when i saw that email at seven o'clock in the morning <laughs> thank you sorry i feel like we should have been there and we yeah, that's sort of the thing i say i was just didn't have an opportunity to. Well, it was also positive. I honestly didn't think. I really yeah. felt it was. It was right there, and I think they did too, truthfully. But whatever hiccup came about, you just have to be creative. That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perseverance at the very end is important. <laughs> yes, absolutely. In life, it's important. Dan, if you need to go, you have a long trip. Whatever. Yeah, you yeah. please. You don't need to stay. Closing up. Honestly. Yeah. It's just a drive. It's two and a half hours. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Bye, Dan. My wife's car tonight. What? I have my wife's car tonight. It's a better car or are they good? Is it a good car? Uh, yeah, it's got a good car. Be safe. Thank you, Dan. We'll, we'll talk. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And then, Pam, your report. My report.
them up my report. My pictures. So I've been very busy with this with this security gate hut. <laughs> jumping through booths because because the current booths that I'm trying to replace. There's no record of it, so therefore we have to start from scratch. So I have to go to ARB, which I did last oh, night. Nice. I have to go to ZBA, which I did tonight. I have to go to planning and zoning. And I have a very small window of opportunity that where the thing has to be built in four to six weeks. So, so far, the stars are still aligning. And um, once, if, if I get through of all the commissions, because even after planning and zoning, I still have building building department. And it has to be built four to six weeks, and it's going to be put there May 1st, and that electrician has to come in and get it all together by May 25th. So I'm, I'm storming ahead. I'm continuing being optimistic that I'll get through. Um, and we'll see. We'll see. If it, it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, that's, we'll be looking at the same monstrosity that we've been looking at for 15 years anyway. Um, um, as I mentioned today, uh, there was, I think that the Jim Coglin and Jim Flynn, um, phenomenal, t the Jim Coglin took the idea and the need of, you know, uh, kayak rental, which went so well last year, 100 plus people on the waiting list, and he talked to Jim Flynn, they built three racks, and literally put it out there to the public, and within hours, it was filled, and they did it with a lottery system, yeah. to be fair. And it was generated by computer, and um, you know it, it, it's fantastic. But it, it still shows the need. We still have over a hundred people on the list, and we we may have room for more. So I, I think I, I think it's just the beginning. And to think that we brought in fifteen thousand dollars in revenue, right? That's great. It's just Amazing. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was great. Kudos to Jim for having that desire to want to, you know, to do it. I mean, it's easy to have an idea, and then there's some people that just don't. You know, make it come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was that's what we're looking for in our office. Um, let's see, I just talked about that, that, that. and then um, you know, Jamie, if you want to talk about some of your programs, let me just talk about Jim. Jim's on his side. He has he has quite a few new ones. Oh, our brochure is coming out this week, correct? Jim? Yes, we're really hoping for the the mailboxes on Friday. But it would be Monday at the latest. If we don't make the Friday goal, then we would send out a blast um, with a digital copy to everyone. And I did send a digital copy to all of you. Did you get it? Nobody look at it? <laughs> okay. Take a look at it. I did. But well, we talked to the printer today, and they, they're feeling good about Friday. So we're still keeping our fingers crossed for, our, for Friday. Because I wanted you guys to see it firsthand, so you know, it is. Jamie did a great job. The cover looks gorgeous, and we again chose a residence picture that was I love the picture that was um, given to us, and I love the idea. And then Jamie put in a new page, which is called the resident resignation recognition, and it um just kind of um we picked Chris Fulmer for the first one, oh, but um that's a great one, and it's a little story about everything he's done for Celix and page. everything else, that's and um so we thought it'd be yes. fun to that's exemplify that's great. a resident that's gone gone above and beyond for some one of our yeah, these amazing parks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's exciting to have yeah. done that, and you know we put a lot of work into it. The, the, the department gets really enthusiastic about what types of things are going on and what type of gaps. So it's, our, uh, our office is a really nice flow right now. It's really great. Um, well, and he kind of, sorry, good. and too, well, it was just kind of perfect because um, they're bringing back the Selig's Woods um, uh, annual event that they used to do. And so um, they're, we're calling it Trails Discovery Day this year. But so it kind of went perfectly so we could kind of talk about that and advertise that a little bit in the same page. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. great. And you have something sweet you did. Right? Yes, we had something sweet, not on Valentine's Day, <laughs> but on the <laughs> night prior to it. Um, we had six local Darien stores that participated in the actual dessert war, so we were excited about that. And um, over 100 people actually participated and tried the desserts and voted. Um, Brown & Co. won it, took home the gold. and. Uh, Second place was Chocolate Works, who won it last year, so they still had a strong showing. And then Palmer's came in third. So that was a lot of fun. And um, 
we had a lot of good support. We, um, the police association partnered with us to sponsor the kids' activities so we could offer them all for free. And um, the depot had a ton of volunteers here um, in the ballpark of 20 helping out. Which I know stay off. Because of it, uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, Pam didn't have to come, so that was awesome. Yeah. And um, no, they were they were just really wonderful. They did such a good job. They did uh, face painting, and I mean, um, they uh, helped where some of the stores that wanted to participate but that couldn't staff their tables, they staffed their tables for them. So kind of like helped get some more stores participation and things like that. So they were wonderful, and um, the Darien Health Department also came and um, for did free blood pressure checks. So it kind of tied in the whole like, take care of your heart this Valentine's Day. So, yeah, we had some good work. Did you finish the budget on that? Oh gosh, no, I haven't. Okay, next time. Next time. And if you want to talk about Daddy Dog Dance, then we can kind of wrap it up after Lori's report. Yeah, so our next event is the end of March, Friday, March 29th, will be the Daddy Daughter Dance. It'll be our third annual this year. Um, we've surprisingly already had for I'd say three weeks now people calling and asking questions about it and stuff so I think people are really excited about it I think we're gonna keep the theme um, from last year again this year and then probably switch it up next year but it'll be kind of the knight in shining armor princess kind of mm -hmm. idea again this year and we've got these really cute giveaways for this year I'm excited about it so Super cute. yes we're excited about that again Just to wrap up, um, I've been participating in the paratreat meetings, went to quite a few of those, and then also found out uh, a week or so ago that by virtue of my responsibility, I'm also an ex officio member of the Harbor Commission. Oh, so, <laughs> so I attended the, uh, I attended the uh, Harbor Commission meeting on Monday night here, and um, you know, the focus of their work is really about water quality and programs around, you know, the sustainability of the sound, and they are most interested in keeping abreast of what's happening with the beach properties, um, particularly Paratree Point Beach, so they definitely want to be kept up to date on what we're doing there. Um, because of just the, the, the environment. The environment. In yeah. the environment. Yeah. And I did mention to them that in going through the interview process with the different providers that a lot of the discussion really was around um, shoreline mm -hmm. restoration That's and great. protection and um, with the living shorelines mm -hmm. that are environmentally um, improving the habitat and, and the different species and whatever, that that was very much a part of all the discussions we were having with the potential providers. So we will keep them up to date on that. Tom Bell is a member also because he's the harbor master. He is also an ex officio member. So he is there and of course he's on the pear tree committee as well. So they have a couple couple of uh, potential links. But they definitely clearly um, are very interested in having an ongoing and regular dialogue with the Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, they arrange different speakers from time to time as they have people come in, you know, try to communicate that information. I know there's someone, I think it's actually going to be at the library later um, this spring and whatever. So they, they would like to keep that connectivity with us. So I will try to participate in their meetings as, you know, as my schedule allows. But I think they meet like six times a year. So um, it's not too, too onerous. So it's really Great. that and getting up to speed. Pam and I have been in touch quite a bit and mm -hmm. all hours of the day and night. <laughs> um, you know, the different you know, the different projects and the budget and everything going on. So so that's really where we are. Nothing else to uh, to report. I am uh, going to speak with someone in the morning about potentially joining the commission, gauge interest, um, some preliminary interest, depending on how that goes. Um, I would then move forward and ask uh, Jamie and the selectman to, to talk to the individual. Um, I think it's your husband. No, it's my father-in-law. Your father-in-law. Okay, and it was the same name. Not, so. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Um, so. I had communicated with. I know the um, RTC. Yeah. Was, told me about it. So. Was aware um, yeah. that we need at least one more member. So, um, but I've not heard anything. Mm -hmm. Anything back from that anyway. So, um, I'm. I'm so you're trying to Jim. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He's in. <laughs> 
position is he? I forget. Like um, nominating? I don't know. I think maybe nominating yeah. or recruiting or whatever. Yeah. So anyway, so to the extent you are aware of people in the community might have an interest, you know, we do have to make sure that we can keep our ranks full because there's a lot to do and, you know, being down members makes it difficult, it makes it difficult for forms. Right. Mm -hmm. Etc. And speaking of that, if I could jump in, mm -hmm. is that um, I would like to, we haven't done that much in the past, but when I do send out the packet, if we can, our SVP, yes, yes, just please. because even tonight I was really pouring my heartstrings about, heart about Dan. That's okay. It was but the Dan, do you want to do an yeah, invite? It's just an automatic, yeah, yeah. it's on people's calendar. And I could do that, a media invite. Oh, that would be great. It just makes yeah. it seem so, then it's yeah. embedded on the calendar. Sure. work. I yeah. think so. It works for, for me. For me. Does anybody yeah. have to have out, Outlook? No, it just depends. No, it, you shouldn't have to. Okay. Um, I'll get them for people that have Outlook and I have Yahoo. Okay, and it just goes right on your and account. And it should go, right? I mean, yeah. Because yeah, people have to we accept can, it. We can do yeah, a test. Yeah, it's we, the you say yes. Yeah. Then you but then it's on. embedded in my calendar and then right. you've got the tracking. And it's right. Because it's just important for people that are no, traveling no, no. far. Yeah, we're worried about your time. Dan, it's, it's five hours yeah. round trip and I'm going to You can do a test. If you have Outlook, I have Yahoo. We can do a test and just sort of see how it works. Sure, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. That way we're all in. Mm -hmm. Good. Sounds okay. good. That's really um that's really all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say so one more thing? I'm so sorry. Um the Youth Commission has an event this Saturday here at Town Hall and it's the Science and Arts Festival. And I'm also on the Pollinator Pathway Committee and so we partnered for a table at the event this weekend and so but aside from us um, we're going to have an activity, but there's so many other programs. They're going to have all different kinds of fun activities for the kids. It's from 1 to 3. And before that, in the auditorium, there's going to be the bubble guy doing his thing. Ah. So there's a lot of fun stuff for the kids. So if you have young kids, it's definitely a really fun event to come out and check You out. can put it on your social media. Everybody's social media. Yeah. Yes. So there'll be the bubble that's thing. That's What's the people. science part of it? So from one to three in the gym is the actual, there's all different kinds of programs like Parks and Rec and Pollinator Pathway. We're going to have a thing, um, it's educating on butterflies, but then also we're going to be making like um, the coffee filter butterflies wow. that you like color and then spray in the water. So it would be good for a three year old? Yeah, sure. Okay, perfect. There's all, I mean, there's all different kinds, like everyone that has the table has, no, my has some kind of activity. Yeah, this weekend. So. Yeah. Yeah, they're all, it's, all of them are supposed to be based around like steam. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun stuff. Okay. A couple of guys are always awesome, so. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Yeah, awesome. he's actually really kind of cool. Great. So, lots Thank of fun. You. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so okay. are we ready for a motion to adjourn? Mary Louise? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mary Louise. As she <laughs> runs <laughs> up with the board. I got my phone. I'm going to adjourn everybody. Yeah. 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 Yeah.